you can play music with the jaw harp. Now, I'm not talking about rhythm, although the jaw harp is amazing at creating different rhythms, but you can actually do melodies, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So the jaw harp is actually just tuned to one pitch. It doesn't change. It's always just the same note over and over and over again. This particular jaw harp um, is tuned to a G. I don't know if it's actually tuned. It just happens to be the note that it plays, which is really wonderful. But you can actually shape the harmonics of the instrument using a few different techniques, and I'm going to show you what to do there. So the first being with your tongue. Now, um, just as we use our tongue to speak and change the, you know, the pitch of our voice, the tongue can do the same for the jaw harp. And so remember that the jaw harp, you are placing it against your skull, and you're using your mouth and your throat and your chest cavity as a resonant chamber. And as you change the shape of that chamber, it affects the different harmonics and pitches that you can come up with. So. Um, with your tongue, if you just, you know, this is, you know, with my tongue at the base of my mouth in a neutral position, not, you know, not, not doing anything special with an open tone. Now, as I raise my tongue to the tip of my mouth, you'll hear a difference in the harmonics. So the pitch, the fundamental pitch of the note doesn't change, but the harmonics do, and within those harmonics, you can create different melodies. All right, so that's method number one to create different pitches with the jaw harp. The second is with your the back of your throat. Um, you're still using your tongue, actually. Um, and um, an easy way to show you how to do this is by using the word song. Now, you may think, I don't know how to control the back of my throat. Well, you do. You do it all the time in, talk, in talking. And in some words that have an NG at the end, like song, um, you'll notice at the beginning of the word, it's an open... Your, your, your throat is open, but as you get to the end of the word song, that sound, it's actually closing off the back of your throat, and thus it's changing the shape of that resonance chamber. I'll give you an example. So this is closed. This is open. So with the back of your throat, you can, and with the help of your tongue, you can create different pitches. And then you can then let your the tip of your tongue take over. So that's another method of changing the shape of the sound. Now, the third method, which is probably the most tricky that I'll spend some time on, is by using your glottis. Now, um, I can't remember the name of this, um, the Larynx something or other awesome, cool gadget. This, uh, I call the, you know, a lot of people call the Adam's apple. You can actually change, you can actually control this, and it's a little tricky, and I'm, I admit I'm probably not um, going to, you know, be able to explain it thoroughly because you, if this is something you're going to have to experiment and find out because it's a very subtle thing that you, you know, usually you just use without even thinking about it, and you do actually control it. It's just very unconscious. So with your your glottis, if one trick that I found that kind of gives you a feel for taking control of it is by imagining that you're pushing a gigantic boulder, like way too big for you to push to actually move it without like you know, hundred other people. If you try and push against it, you'll 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 make probably make this sound. <laughs> and if someone's overhearing you watch this YouTube video, they'll probably raise an eyebrow, but pay them no heed. We're learning here. So if you push against that boulder, you'll notice that my Adam's apple kind of moves with that motion. And, well, and you can feel it, can feel some constricting there. And you'll notice that that, um, that throat cavity, you know, it, it, it cuts off. So I'll, I'll give you an example of the sound difference when I close it off by pushing that boulder. That's open. So it's really kind of tricky, right? And it takes some practice to get some control over that. Another method to try and give you an idea of how, you know, what it feels like is by the act of swallowing. So every time you swallow, that moves this whole system. And so you can get a, you know, a feel for it if you try and stop that swallowing motion. And it's kind of uncomfortable to practice, I admit. But once you get the hang of it, it becomes pretty natural as you're playing. 
I can't help but make funny faces whenever I do this, <laughs> but it's all a part of learning the jaw harp. So once you kind of get a feel for it, you can like, okay, you can then apply that as you're playing. Really tricky stuff. But if you learn how to shape it, then that is another way that you can shape the sound and change the harmonics of the instrument. So that's how you shape the sound. So I'll show you now how you can refine that and practice that so you can actually do something with it. It's one thing to know how to make the sound and one another thing to control it. So the first thing is to just slowly go from the lowest pitch you can and then slowly move up to the highest pitch you can under control and then go back down again. So I'm gonna use my tongue to try and do just that. And then you can even try continuously. It's essential for being able to control the pitch is being able to successfully go up and down without you know having any issues. And then you can do the same with the back of your throat. And then even true if you try and use your glottis. Sorry, my jar harp is rattling a lot because I'm so focused on trying to deliver this information. All right, so those are that's one way to get control is to just slowly go up and down smoothly, and then you can move on to try and identify the formants. Now, a formant is just um, every instrument when you play a single pitch, a single note, it has harmonics, and there's different like resonances um, um, in that in that single pitch, and so. If you, what I mean is that there are some, it, there are some like steps that you can hear to find steps, and that is, you know, basically places where the resonance is the strongest. And so, you know, all of the the, the different methods, the tongue versus the glottis, they have different places where they resonate. So with the tongue. Notice I just was playing like four notes as I go up and down because it seems like those were those are the strongest resonance points for the for the instrument. And similarly with the glottis. So using that um, method you can really uh, that's an important thing to practice is trying to find the resonance point resonant points and the form, basically the formants of the instrument and get a feel for them, especially for your particular jaw harp. So now that you can put these together, you can, the, the final thing is to actually play a scale. Now, because the throat closed versus the tongue, they have different resonance points, you have to put those two together. So um, from what I've been able to find, um, the common resonance for a jaw harp is the starting note of a scale is open. The starting note of the jaw harp, that's that's a resonance po resonant point, and then it alternates. So the next note is throat closed. This is, I'm still learning this process, but you can use that to develop actually a scale by alternating between open, so, you know, op open, closed, open, closed, open, closed, all the way up a scale. Da, 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 da. And that is, so it's essential to be able to control your tongue and your glottis together to form those melodies. If you're new to the jaw harp and you're like, whoa, okay, that was a lot. Um, 
you know, you're right. There's there's a definitely a place to start for the jaw harp where you can learn just the basics, how to hold it, how to play the basic sounds. Make sure you check out this video. I go over all of that information all in one place so that you can be well equipped to play the jaw harp. Also, don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to be sharing more information about the jaw harp and about several other different instruments if you're interested in learning about music and instruments. Thanks for watching.